meeting is just about to start and I'd just like to remind our public forum guests that um, if you do speak you will have five minutes to address the board and that this meeting is recorded. Are we ready? Yes? Yep. Okay, good morning and welcome to our 14th of June community board meeting. Um, firstly, I'd like to ask Deli if you'd like to do our cut of care, please. Kia ora te marino, kia whakapapa pounamu te moana, kei huara hi mā tātou i te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou i a tātou katoa, huie, tāuikie. May peace be widespread, may the sea be like green stone, a pathway for us all this day, let us show respect for each other, for one another, bind us all together. Um, and apologies, I have apologies for Chrissy and Peter. May I have a mover and a seconder? Thank you, Bess and John. All those in favour? Aye. Opposed? None. Carried. Right. Uh, item 1.3, which is our public forum, I'd like to invite Peter Wood. Good morning, Peter. Good morning all. Sorry, I have to be seated for you. Um, just too many birthdays. Well, he was comfortable. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is my third attendance presentation um, to do with not having managed retreat, but shoring up the coast. And I received a letter from the TCDC signed by uh, Jamie Boyle, coastal scientist, which I think would be very nice to share with you, if I may. Yes. Yeah. Dear Peter, thank you for your valuable feedback. As you may be aware, TCDC adopted the Shoreline Management Pathways, the SMPs, project in September 22. Coastal Adaption Pathways, and that's labeled CAP, have been developed and completed as part of this project, which identify the appropriate adaption options to mitigate the impacts of the climate change now and at least 100 years into the future. I cannot help but think, uh, well, with you and you'll be here then. Our information and resources are mostly available via computer viewing. And he goes on. Because I don't own a computer, it gives me some instructions. You, yes. you can view the coastal adaption pathway for Buffalo Beach via this link, and it explains how to navigate the website. Please also see attached Buffalo Beach South for your reference. As a community-led project, a wide range of community values and objectives were gathered and fed into what an appropriate adaption option looked like. Uh, they had a lot of stakeholders, if you recall. Whilst managed retreat has been discussed, the adaption pathway options into the future are approximately for 0.4 metres, that would be 40 centimetres of sea level rise, are currently undecided. Although the chance for feedback into the SMP work is finished, we will endeavour to save yours, and in the next iteration of our coastal adaption planning, there will be another opportunity to feedback into the process. Yours sincerely, Jamie Bull. He added with his letter <coughs> a piece of work about the the beach and with the hangar, and if I could just read the last little bit here. Buffalo Beach is a large and popular sandy beach in Wikianga on the Coromandel East Coast. This policy unit from the Royal S. Conning DHV Coastal Adaption Pathway, this policy unit encompasses the length of Buffalo Beach between the northern end of the locally named 
NZTA seawall and Whittianga Wharf. South of the NZTA seawall, there's further rock protection extending to the Whittianga Harbour entrance. This structure is generally buried. There is very limited land between the coastal road, Butler Beach Road, and the Esplanade and the beach. Only a footpath fits in this area along the crest of the protection structures over most of the policy unit. The landward side of the coastal roads is almost entirely covered with residential and commercial development. Thank you for that. Um, it seems to me uh, these are rhetorical questions. Have you had a workshop or discussion about coastal, about climate change? If you haven't, then you don't have a set position about it at this point. Perhaps you would consider that as one of the things you get. Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions for Peter? Thank you for that, Brent. No. Thank you for coming in. Next, I would like to invite Noel Hewlett. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to, in uh, my public uh, input time here, put a question to council and regional authorities. Why does it seem to be ignored that silt and debris infiltration into our stormwater system is not an issue? With over one metre build-up on our harbours, rivers and stormwater systems, it presents us all with flooding difficulties. Pretty annual waterways have a covenant on their coastal canal properties to dredge the canals to an optimum level. Just ask uh, what the, is the budget allocation for this huge issue? And that's all I want to present, but I welcome any uh, questions. Can anyone have any questions for Noel? No? All right. Can we just yeah. sit a moment before we can <coughs> Yeah. Before we decide for a question. Um, so you're concerned about silt filter? Well, absolutely. Well, I, I've been out of uh, council for many years now, but I got a call from a chap in uh, Corrie Glen the other day, and he said that uh, he used to dive off the uh, Corrie Glen uh, um, uh, uh, bridge there, and now he can't because there's uh, at least a metre and a half of silt built up. And when they have their Corrie Glen market days on a, on a Friday, they have them, they, they have to be put off now because uh, it floods immediately. And, the, uh, and that's just one of the upper streams that we have the Corrie Glen. Uh, uh, river. The uh, the other one, of course, is Mother Brown's Creek, where uh, or Buffalo Beach, which is uh, so full of uh, rubbish and stuff that the uh, properties in uh, 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 of Simpsons uh, and you know subdivision are all in threat because where does the uh, where does the water go when it enters into our system? Storm system, it goes back on the land. No question about that. So it's a, it's a real concern. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Yes. yes, morning tea from Noel. Um, all right, okay, thank you. Were there, did you have another question, Caroline? Done. Have you, are you going to um, contact? 
done that done that many a time already, and uh, uh, they don't seem to listen about uh, being an issue about uh, the huge amount of uh, silt that is coming through. And of course, when you have S Valley and uh, Gisborne, and especially in Buller, mm -hmm. where there's no there's no dredging of the harbour anymore. There used to be dredging of our harbour and Tyro Harbour. And in Tairua, it is so bad that every time uh, it floods, it goes up the Tairua River, and of course it floods the uh, the area you know that we know so well. And, uh, and it's a problem. It's a major national problem. Probably. But I sort of needed to be emphasised at this uh, at this level. Thank you. Uh, anyone else before you? So are you suggesting that the silt is coming from the forestry? Oh, it's coming from inland, of course, yeah. and it flows out to sea, and uh, where would you go if it, uh, it just comes back in? And when you have six to eight metre waves that are coming in, there's no way that uh, without uh, floodgates and that, that sort of thing. To give you an idea on how how bad it is in Pyro, uh, and uh, they were being flooded out with Gabriel um, if uh, they didn't have floodgates on the uh, Henny Murray uh, River. And they were activated and saved fire off from of being flooded. So that's our bad silt infiltration. Was, yeah, just an example. Thank you. I'll leave that copy. No, it's not that part. <laughs> Isn't Scott Simpson the shadow environment? Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Noel. Yeah. Right. Uh, there is a couple of other folks in the room just checking. Did anyone else want to speak at public forum? Welcome, June. How are you? Yes, I'd like to add to what I was talking about. I've actually been in touch with WRC over this um, build up of salt and sand and everything in the river. I've spoken to um, quite a few people, even waterways, and um, yeah, and they say they can't do too much about it either. I'm just wondering if there's anything we can do because. Um, Right up at Mangawai Heads, all that area where they have been salt is just blocked by total harbour. And that could be have a really detrimental effect on this town if something like that ever happened here. So we need to do I think we need to do something about it if we can. I don't know quite not have what. Um, I've been into everything I can think of. Um, but I just wonder if the community board and council have got any idea what we can do there. Because um, WRC have said to me that they've been stopped by certain people that feel that they don't want to have any disturbance with um, any to do with the, the sea and the, and the sand banks with the, the birds and everything on it and all that sort of thing. But I don't think we can we can stop that. We've really got to do something, otherwise it's going to affect the town. I think it's going to. So that's what I'd like to say here. Yes, and it's come, it's coming right along the beach too. You can see it because we've been. And the other thing is, with a lot of people going out like we are to a boat, um, if you get sand in your motor on a dinghy, you can say goodbye to your, to your motor. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's happening out there, especially from Dunda Street ramp. And um, yeah, and talking about ramps too, I hope you people are going to keep that nice and clean. Because quite frankly, every time we go over there, there's stacks of um, slack or whatever you call it on the uh, ramp, so that needs to be kept kept um, all right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anyone have any questions of oh, June? No. Okay. Thank you. I forgot to suggest to the group when I was speaking that you could have a group from the SMP, that's Shoreline Management Plans, speaking to your group about what they've achieved. 
Thank you. Um, Linda, sorry, were you? Yes, please. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Nice to be here in the room. Appreciate it greatly. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to um, ask the community board if they could please take a look at what's happening with the tsunami sirens. Um, our mayor said that he would form a committee which we were to be a part of. Uh, that has not happened. But I did see a statement where Gary Towner from the Emergency Management Committee was proceeding with investigations into this. And I would wonder why that was happening when um, we were explicitly told by many people, including some in this room, that the tsunami siren um, would be looked into for the safety of the community and also look at being reinstigated, since all the work had been done by our organisation and committee people to get the information for council that had not been done prior. I guess my additional question to that would be, is there an emergency management committee? That's all I have to say on that one. I would appreciate some follow through on that. Are there any questions from anybody? No. Um, I'd like to address something that's personal to me. I appreciate the fact that um, I was here at the last meeting and the beautiful karakia was said, said by um, this, and the karakia was said this morning by Delhi. I read an article in the uh, Informer this week about the Filipino community in Fidiana, and I never realised that we had a Filipino community in Fidiana, but we do, and they are very, very appreciative of what's done for them in this community, as are many of the Indian people, the Chinese people, and many other nationalities that we have in our community. I would like to ask the board if they would um, take into consideration the uh, expressions of gratitude from other members in our community. I think it's wonderful that um, somebody has decided to have a prayer at the community board meetings, but I think it's also uh, in the best interest of inclusivity to allow other members of our community to offer a prayer of thanks, of gratitude, and expressions of uh, our unity in the community. And it would have been wonderful if the Filipino community had been invited here this morning to offer their expression of gratitude for all they've received from the community. And there are many other traditions in this town who could also offer prayers at the meeting. We all respect one another. We all agree that inclusivity is important. And I think that this would be an inclusive way for the board to include the community going forward. As it's this stage, it seems like it's a very exclusive process that's happening. Any questions? Anyone have any questions for Linda? Not directly on that, but I'd like to come back to the Emergency Management Committee. Um, what, what's your understanding? Is, has that been something that's been in place previously? And what role would they have compared to the civil defence teams that have been operating at the moment? I'm just trying to understand where your area of concern is. Over the past couple of years that um, we have been concerned about the safety of the community and not having that first call, call for a tsunami siren to action, which is a call to action, and most people ignore their answer phones when they, their phones when they go off or pretend. Um, we were dealing directly with the emergency management committee that was um, the head or the manager, as in many of our correspondents, was Gary Towler. Uh, the chair of the emergency management meeting who was since left was Sally Christie. Uh, we had numerous calls with, well not calls, at meetings we had correspondence and discussions with um, Gary Towler and we attended several meetings online with Sally Christie to express our concerns and to try and proceed with what was necessary for the community. However, we found um, through many 
Lagoma <laughs> applications and requests that um, there's been a lot of inaccurate information given to the council. My understanding is um, we were told that there was going to be a chair for the um, management committee, for the committee, for the, what do you call it, emergency management committee. And that was one of the delights of the community that we would have somebody like John Grant, who had so much experience from Christchurch earthquake, who would most probably, we were hoping, would be elected as the chair. However, that did not happen. And um, the emergency management committee seems to have uh, disappeared. The responsibility has been given out to you. So hence my, my question, um, does the Emergency Management Committee exist? And why has the Mayor not followed through on his very loud and clear message, as other people at this table have, that um, the tsunami siren issue would be looked at again because the community wanted it and many of the councillors and community board members were supporting reinstating them, especially in Fidianga and Porakaho. We're in a critical situation here. Cycle, the cyclone has just shown us that. Does that answer your question or did I go around it? Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Did you want to speak in that? Did you want to present? No? Okay. All right. Was there anyone else that wanted to speak at public forum? No. May I have a mover and a seconder for public forum? Dally and John, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Any items? Uh, sorry, I carried. Um, any items not on the agenda? Any conflicts of interest? No? All right, item 1.6, which is our minutes for confirmation. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Okay. Thanks, John. Seconded by me. Best, thank you. Do you have any comments? I have a general comment. Yes. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the flow of this. I probably just that I'm not familiar where there is time stamping on various aspects of the of the minutes. Is this something that is new or because it doesn't seem to portray a, a full reflection of what led to those points, just a question for me. Through the Chair, um, we will watch the recording and put the time steps into the relevant items on the agenda. Yeah, I, I understand what the time stamp is, it's just this being an official record of the meeting, it means you actually have to look at two different things to be able to follow and understand it, whereas a set of minutes to me is a recording of, of, of what was done and agreed at the meeting. So it's a question around standing orders, I guess, more than anything in regard to whether this complies with, uh, with a, a prescribed set of minutes for the meeting, because I can't read those without going to something else to look at it to confirm that that is what actually took place. I've actually fed that back this morning as well, that I feel like these are quite abridged and um, they need a bit more content yeah. around our discussions. And, and um, you know, we have folks in our community that don't have access to computers or feel comfortable navigating YouTube videos and things like that. So I have fed that back. Um, but thank you for raising that. <coughs> it just makes it very difficult. Well, I've oh. moved it to, to actually feel comfortable about passing this as a true record of a meeting. Through the Chair, um, standing orders item 28.2 refers to that, but I've taken your comment on board and I'll pass it on. So can you just explain what that standing order says? Okay, so matters recorded in minutes um, is the date, time, venue of the meeting, the names of the members present, the chairperson, any apologies of lease of absence, uh, member absent without apology or leave, member absent on council, the arrival and departure time of members, um, and any decisions made. Sorry, I just went on up here too. Um, 
there are uh, any failure of a quorum, a list of any external speakers on the topics they address, a list of the items considered, members tabled at the meeting, the resolution and amendments related to those items, including those that were lost, provided they have been moved and seconded in accordance with these standing orders, the names of all movers and seconders, any objections made to words used, all divisions taken, and if taken, a record of each member's vote, the names of any members requesting that their vote be or, or absenteeism be recorded, any declarations of financial or non-financial conflicts that of interest, the contempt, censure, removal of any members, any resolutions to exclude members of the public, and the time at which the meeting concludes or adjourns, and the names of people permitted to stay in public excluded. I can get a copy of So are you wanting to see these minutes fleshed out before we approve them? Well, in, in listening to that, I think they probably do comply with it because what has to be recorded has been recorded. Yes. It's just that it's missing. I, yeah, I think you and I have the same concern that right. if, if you would just walk into reception and pick them up and read them, this really wouldn't give you yeah. an understanding of context of the context. Yeah, context. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's sort of what feels like it's missing. Um, but you'll take that back and talk, discuss with governance. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thanks, Kelly. All right. So, with that in mind, you're happy to move. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on that? Sorry, Caroline. Um, I was actually present at the meeting, but I'm not listed. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the recording to make sure that you're there. <laughs> we'll <look at> the <laughs> um, all right, we'll look at that. Thank you. Thanks for flagging that. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. Sorry for receiving the minutes. Yes. And with a notation that we will check that. Oh, I'm, I, Caroline was there. Caroline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yes. I'm happy to. Yes. So we've still got John and Deli. You're comfortable? Yes. Yep. All those in favour? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Carry. Thank you. So you'll look at those. Thanks. Right. Item 2.1, which is our Mercury Bay Community Correspondence Report. May I have a mover and a seconder to receive? I'll move it. Thanks, Deli. Seconded by John. We have any discussion? No. All those in favour? Did you want to talk to anything? No. It's pretty self-explanatory. It is pretty self-explanatory. We need to invite Mr. Bibby to our volunteers morning tea next week. All the great work he's doing cleaning out those drains. Uh, right. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Carried. It takes us to item 3.1, which is road stopping. This is in Tangiora Avenue in Whangapoa. Is this why you're here? This is part of the reason. Part of the reason. Would you like to join us? Thank you. Right, may I have a move and a seconder, please? I'll move. Thanks, John. Seconded by Deli. Is there anything you'd like to bring to our attention in this report? Uh, through the chair, no, the, I believe the report is fairly self-explanatory. Yeah. It's a historical issue that we've identified. And the road stopping is the most suitable way that we can find of solving it. Okay, does anyone have any questions of Ed? Okay, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? None? That's carried. Thank you. Um, oh, I think he's going to come back. <laughs> We've got two managers online for the next item. Right, okay, so item 3.2, which is page 26 on my printed order paper, um, is the proposed village names uh, for the Moorings Retirement Village on Joe and Gaskell Drive. 
And I believe Jane is online. May I have a mover and a seconder for this report, please? I'll move. Moved by John, seconded by Bess. Thank you. Hello. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning, morning. board members. Morning. Um, I may through the chair, may I take my report as having been read? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to speak to any key points or answer any questions. Um, just to highlight, this is for the internal roading of the new retirement village, so it's not going to be public council roading or vested in council, but remained owned by the village complex. Mm. Um, but the names are required under the standard and guidelines to ensure that those units can be named and easily identified. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any comments? Is everybody comfortable with the preferred option one? Yes? Yes. Okay, all those in favour, please say aye. Right. Opposed? There being none, carried. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, board members. Which takes us along to item 3.3, which is our CapEx work program, and that's page 31 of my printed document. Uh, may I have a mover and a seconder, please? I'll move. Thanks, Dally. Seconded by... John, right, um, hello, and good morning, Andrew. Good morning, uh, board, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, do we have any discussion, any questions for Andrew? I've got a couple of, uh, if you're interested. All right. Would you? Yes. Why would would you like to give us your updates, and then we can? Uh, yeah, the minor reserves project two three zero seven on page one. Uh, just a few updates on that. The uh, caretaker's shed has been relocated to the sports path, and uh, yeah, and that will be finished uh, this month. Um, the playground at the sports park. We're just waiting for the, sh the soft fall uh, material to be delivered. <coughs> Excuse me. And then that will be finished. Um, on the storm repair, uh, all the tree work, uh, the felling work has been completed. Um, there's some stair work at RA to be done. And uh, Cook's Beach, um, there's been 15 pine trees felled at Cook's Beach further to the um, the um, storm damage. Um, and the work at um, Flaxmill Bay will start very shortly. So that's, um, I received that from the Parks and Facilities Officer this week. Um, Mary Tay Tai development, there's a boundary adjustment uh, with roading that's currently in progress, um, but the the signage is being sorted out now. Um, just a quick one on page two, and by all means, go back to page one, should you wish to. Kamarama Cemetery, um, the work I'm advised by a wonderful project manager uh, will be finished by the end of June, subject to the weather. But the more good weather we're having now, uh, the better it's looking so um, everything that's there on the work program um, is on track <coughs> now golf is beach coastal protection renewal i've had an update on this um, the design has been confirmed with tonkin and taylor for the erosion protection structure that will include a second layer of uh, filled sandbags uh, as per the existing ones that are there to the same height, uh, the sandbags have been ordered. The lead time is eight weeks and the construction is expected to be completed by mid-August. Uh, there will be a site walkover to update residents in the area uh, during week commencing the 26th of June and the final costs of all of this work are expected to be within the storm recovery budget 
that has been uh, set. Um, uh, and the Pityanga RTS, always very topical. Um, there will be a report coming to the board uh, via Bruce Henson on the 28th of July. We are proceeding with an updated layout design at the moment, and uh, that will be a report. We'll be going to the council meeting on the 2nd of August um, with regard to cost and um, the design that we are hopeful will proceed and construction. Uh, those are my updates, um, Madam Chair person. Uh, Thank any, you. Any more questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I see John's got some questions. I've got some questions. Do you want to go first? Well, I was just through the chair going to ask the question as to whether we will be discussing the refuse centre at any other time or as a stage that we need to talk about. This would be the time. Okay. So the question that I have got is that I understand that there was a report that was written in regard to the original design. Has that report been received and appreciate that we're getting an update from Bruce in July, but I'm just wondering whether the report on the um, on the design has actually been received and is there any update that can no. from that? No, it hasn't. Um, it's, it's somewhat premature to write a report on the previous design, John, when we're looking at updating it at the moment. And I have a draft copy of the uh, the concept, which is being worked on as we speak and should be finished by the end of this week. So there hasn't been a, a report uh, written on the previous design. Perhaps that will be in time for our August update. Did you have any other questions? No, 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 no. Yeah, that's fine. Any other um, questions? I'll, for... I'll let you go to mine here. Okay. Uh, while we're on the RTS, um, we I see that in the that page update, there's a fast track pathway for the resource recovery centre. Yeah. Are, are they still able to tick away at what they are wanting to achieve at yes. the present time? Yes, they are. So they're not They've being delayed or hampered at all. No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. And what our our commitment, our financial commitment, remains uh, intact. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, going back to you mentioned the garden sheds have moved from the Monk Street building. Do you yep. have an update on when we might see some? What's the correct term? Gravel. Next year. Uh, just it being tidied up and you know being available for use as overflow parking. I Is don't at the moment, but I can find out for you. Yeah, that would be useful. Thank you. Yeah, I'll find out today. Okay, and going back to the storm tidy up. Uh, um, Brophy's Beach. Yeah, well, Brophy's and, and the Hoggan Path really. Parts of that path, particularly around Tapu Tapu Atia, where we have sort of concrete footpath thing that then joins the Hoggan path. On one side, it's it, there's quite a big gap, and I, I watched a little young fella come off his bike the other day. When is the Hoggan path going to be tidied up in that storm clean-up work? I don't know, I'm afraid, but I can find out. Thank you. That's I, I, I'm noting this down. Uh, okay. Re re so we can uh, find out what... Uh, uh, remedial work. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'll find out for you. I'll find out. Yeah, just through the chair, um, the Hoggin paths are all subject to a TIF funding application, and we'll find out about the TIF funding application in um, early August. Um, sometimes you find out before that you have been, you know, that you're in consideration or or whatever, but the, the hard date is, is always. August. Mm. Well, we do some just, there's a couple of bits that I feel potentially are quite dangerous. We do some just tidying up 
Yep. So my understanding is that there is um, sort of operational um, light tidy up works happening mm. um, ahead of of the substantive yeah, organisation. Through the chair, that's going to be my question because there's but where the concrete meets the part opposite Murray's house is, is really really dangerous. Yeah, and I think that one that you said next to Top Yes, is really really dangerous. Like someone's yeah. going to come off their bike yeah. and, and have yeah. a, a major. It's, they're just a big road. drop. You kind of come off the path and then come off the concrete and then there's a big drop. It's worth jumping on your bike. Yeah. And going <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yep. so please let us know those. I'll record that one. Mm. Yeah, mm. perfect. Thank you. Well. I just have one you? last last question for you, Andrew. And I see Matarangi Wastewater Treatment Plant upgrade. There's a few ambers there. Now, I know we're waiting um, on the WRC consent, but I, I mean, sorry, the hearing. Are you at all concerned? No. I'm concerned about the time it's taken to get where we are now. Madam Chairman, um, but um, no, I don't think so. It's uh, the um, financial commitment to this project will be carried over into next year. Um, it's taken a long time to get confirmation of that hearing. So um, no, I'm not. I'm not overly concerned at the moment, but uh, it depends what really conditions come out of that hearing that we have to adhere to. So. It's a bit of a question mark at the moment until we have that hearing. OK, I, I really meant um, not from a financial perspective, but are you concerned about its ability to cope with um, the waste a, a, no. in its current format? Not at all, no. OK, that's definitely, okay, that's fine. definitely not. All right, thank you. That's my question. Is there anyone else? Um, oh, in the section um, in the packet, it's Page 37 under gold cards and we're putting on a theory. Yeah, yeah I, it's, it's a typo. It's it the is. same error from last time that oh, I dragged down. So I apologise. I raised that. that. Yeah, that's been. And thank you, Madam Chair, for asking all of my questions. Okay, no problem. Uh, anybody else? No? All right, Andrew? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Did we do a mover and a seconder? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yeah. All in favour? Uh, sorry, we've got who do we have? Uh, Councillor Okay, Sally and John. So, all those in favour? Please say aye. 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 Yes. Against? None. Carried. All right. So now we are at item four point one which is our action schedule. And that is actually on page 41 of my printed copy. May I have a mover and a seconder to receive the action schedule, please? Thank you, Deli. Thank you, Peter. Uh, seconded by, I'll second it. Um, any discussion, any questions? Okay, I have one, and that is the relocation of trees, 93 Buffalo Beach Road at the Mercury Bay Boating Club. Mm. Through the chair, that was raised, um, was it last meeting or the meeting before by Bess after you'd been on the trip there and you asked about the bund, the trees on the bunds being um, relocated. And at the time, um, the parks people, we'd come back with the information at the last meeting that the parks people didn't think that they could be successfully relocated, mm -hmm. but they were going to um, engage the services of a qualified mm -hmm. arborist and tree surgeon to establish that, and that hasn't been completed yet because most of the tree people are working on the Cyclone Gabriel cleanup. Mm -hmm. Would that come under part of their... Can, is it come under part of their consenting as well, shouldn't consenting it? Consenting issue? Dean may be better able to answer that. Yes. Yeah. So just through the chair, um, generally when you apply for a resource consent, you've got to avoid remedy and mitigate. So if the trees can't be transplanted, um, then usually there would be replacement trees put in to um, um, an equal or, or, or so standard. So that's quite commonplace that there'll be um, conditions around replacement planting if they can't be transplanted. 
Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, yes. related question. Mm -hmm. um, I've had several calls from people regarding those trees on Buffalo Beach that are um, roots in the air and lying on their side. And um, when we were in front of the tower yesterday, we actually saw trees that were, had been uprighted and held with bungees and strops and God knows what else and sort of really a big effort made to protect them. So I've got people in, in the community quite concerned yes. about what's happening with those trees. Is there any update on that? Thank you. Uh, through the chair, no, I have no update on those trees other than that they were covered with soil and were intended to be left to grow. But I didn't check with our parks team mm -hmm. in more detail. So uh, they're taking a different approach, different approach to where they've actually stood them up mm -hmm. and um, look like they're making quite an effort to um, protect the maze. Protect them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Through the, through the chair, I can look at that as well. I do understand that when the a car will fall over, sometimes they'll be successful as they have fallen over. Um, but certainly, if there's a different approach in front of a tar, then we can have a look at that. Um, so it, but I suppose it would be um, considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, but I'll just raise that there is that uh, potential inconsistency in there. And mm. there was an RFS, I think that was passed on some trees in Robinson Road as well. Yeah, that's done. Yeah, as an art request for service. Yeah. Well, just you, the chair, just going down as a walker down there, it looks like to me nothing's been done about it. Yeah, that is, I, I would agree. Because I think what's happened is sand has been pushed out, but then that sand is washed away. So it's potentially, because I've seen it when they were all kind of covered, and the, but they haven't, no one's physically upright. tried to upright them. Upright. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's a science behind protecting them, but it's sort of after every big storm, see, should we be going back and immediately making sure that they're covered again so they have more of a chance of survival? I understand that different approach, but I'm thinking if they were uprighted and then they were, yeah, I, I would understand that. Yeah. I really don't understand this. <coughs> Caroline, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, the area that you're talking about, um, you know how the hogging past is, is that area going to be filled in? Whether uh, hogging so path is eroded. Yeah, yeah whether the bite is, is yeah. going to yeah. actually be replenished. Um, yeah. So through the chair, I understand that that's part of the... Um, restoration program um, and I suppose just going back to the the how each area is treated um, the beach profiles are very different um, around the peninsula and so um, you know sometimes you aren't able to take a consistent approach because the, the yes. beach profile and the coastal dynamics might be um, making some things a lot easier to do in some situations than they than they would be there um, and I think um, the chair made the point around sand was pushed up, but it looks as though it's been eroded away again. So, um, and that's the, the nature of Buffalo Beach at the moment. But what about the bite? Is that going to be pushed up or replenished with something from somewhere? Building. <laughs> yeah, um, through the chair, um, again, it's, it's on the program. Um, it, it's had one attempt. So I'll, I'll follow up with the coastal team about that. So, so just to be clear through the chair that um, the area of greatest concern is the one that's immediately after the car park where the, you know, where the toilets Where are. the memorial is, you know, yeah. the anchor yeah. and things. So, so that in the last 24 hours has become a lot worse. Um, and I've just seen pictures on it this morning where, where the bite now is completely mm. just about up to the road. Um, and, you know, uh, that seems to highlight a number of things that would be of concern. You know, the, the next stage, if we had a storm the next week, would be right up to the road. Um, is there a plan in place or, or what's happening, you know, because it's starting to get into really protection issues on uh, on properties and roads and things like that. Yeah, through through the chair, I am aware that our coastal scientist is looking um, at that edge there in terms of the resource consents that are already granted for the existing wall. Um, they need to be renewed. 
um, and he's looking at ways to address that edge effect, uh, which is essentially causing the bite. So there is some specific technical work being looked at with regard to what's happening there. Um, I just don't know the outcome of that. I just know that um, it's being looked into as part of that process um, because an edge effect will continue to be, um, I'm not a coastal scientist, but it will continue to be a, a vulnerable erosion site. So just, you know, through the chair, and we've got Ed with us. Is it something that sort of has reached your... Yeah. Has it reached me yet? Yeah. Okay. Through the chair, I think it is. Those trees, which may seem quite a minor concern, and that big bite, which has an incredible amount of traffic, they're, they're very visible, and they do evoke a lot of emotion from the community because it's something very tangible that they care about. Mm -hmm. So we are getting a lot of a lot of conversation, a lot of feedback about that. And I understand there are processes to go through, but it looks like we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. yes. So the, the perception is that we don't care, we're letting the Pohutakawa trees die and fall into the water. Um, I know what happens in the background, I know how staff, how hard staff work. But from yeah from a from a, a, a win publicly doing something about those um, issues would be really positive. Yeah. Through through the chair, um, it seems like I should arrange for a bit of a briefing for the board on that topic. Yes. Um, and some key points um, so that when the public comes forward and approaches you you've got some key messages to go through and we can we can do that. And, and be able to tell them that there's some action being but, taken. Yeah, but what, I mean, that's that's a great idea, mm -hmm. but one step further, why not let's have a little sign down there and say, look, we know that these trees have been damaged. This is what we are doing. We The science says these trees will fall over, they will continue to grow as long as we cover the roots and can keep them protected. Whatever the, 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 the science or the story is, Let's get a little sign made up that's just banged in there and said that we, we completely understand and we are managing this situation because it is really, it's a motive for people, yes. yeah. um, the, the trees. Mm. But there is also a very real concern that if you're saying it's worse, I haven't been there since Monday, mm. Sunday, but if it's closer to the road, mm. we, we must have uh, a... Actually, I just got a photo sent to me this morning by someone who's concerned about it. And yeah. it is a lot worse than it was a couple of days ago. So. Yeah. And I guess, so I guess what we're trying to understand is at what point is there a hang on, we're getting within Kui of the road now. Yeah. Well, and, and what action will that be? I guess is that, that's what we're trying to understand. Well, we've got the retirement place just across the road. Oh, from the road. Yes. You know, and yeah. they last time was sandbags. Yes. And, you know, you can imagine the anxiety levels yes. of people in that area. So, uh, you know, it would be quite good to have some proactive statement that can be put out to let people have some comfort that it's under control. Mm, absolutely. Just sure the chair, something's not sitting right with me. You say that Pohutukawa trees are growing, okay, you know, they'll grow, but are they going to grow this way? Don't we want them to grow up that way? Apparently they will. Through the so they're just going to go up and but lift themselves up, sorry, I don't I, I would like that follow-up on what's happening in the and the approach that they've taken. And again, public perception is that someone has done something, the tree has been uprighted, there are strops holding it steady for the next onslaught of weather. We've got a northeasterly coming this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. through, through the chair, um, I do have an ecology background, so I can talk to this. I do know that often street trees, don't you have uh, Maori Princess Pudakawa tree, they're often upright and they can be supported in their structure. Um, so. So that's a, an easy, easy sort of fix, and I'm not sure what the situation is in front of the time. I don't think that one is a um, Māori princess, because I know what they look like. But um, there's also um, your self-seeded pūtakawas and pūtakawas that um, uh, get knocked around a little bit when they're smaller, and they're multi-leaded, they're multi-stemmed, they sprawl, they, um, you know, they do um, cling on to the, the coastal dune system. Um, and, and so, yeah, again, it's it's probably looking at um, 
uh, a case-by-case -case scenario, but all of these points are important and will get you an update on, on all of them. Just through the chair, just want, you know, the public to know something is being done. Mm -hmm. See them upright and even strops, whatever, sellotape, hang them, at least we're doing something. They're not going to, you look at them now, it looks like what everyone says, mm -hmm. that we don't care. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions or comments on the action schedule? I was through the chair. I'm just wondering what's happening near the Macacapa fig tree, where the erosion's getting quite close to the road with a little creek. This. Do you know where I'm talking yeah, about? We all think of the reserve there, and there's a little culvert bridge that the erosion is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, through the chair again, um, that's a question that we can ask the um, Parks and Coastal team to update on. Um, it is part of the, the program. Um, it's also being looked at in terms of um, the shoreline management plan implementation as one of those sites. Um, but we can get an update on that as well. Because they're going to run out of reserve to plant on. You know, they did all that planting, mm -hmm. put in the bollards, and of course it goes away. And that's the waste of money and resources. Like this will be a bit more substantial. I just had one other comment, and that was um, this overflow car parking. Should that sit on somewhere on here until that project's finished? Because I noticed it doesn't sit in our work program. Mount Street. Yes. Yeah. Um, through the chair, I can add that to the work program. I think into the other items on the work program. Oh, so I not think, in here. Yeah, I think that would be the better place okay. to put it. All right. Thank you. If we can get that added, that'd be useful. Right. Any other comments or questions before we move on? Thanks, Kim. Go on, Kim. Nope. Okay. Uh, so we have a move from the second. Uh, all those in favour of the action schedule, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Carried. So, Chairperson's report. Now, I just need a mover and a seconder to receive this report. No? We don't need to receive oh, sorry, it. Yes, we do. Sorry. We need to receive <laughs> sorry, it. I'm sorry. Yep, that's fine. Uh, mover and seconder to receive the Chair's report. Okay, I see that hand go up. That's Deli, seconded by. <laughs> we were just you were talking, so you can see the. Yes, no Caroline has been dropped. Oh. Down so Deli was doing this. Right, okay, so Deli and Caroline, mover and seconded to receive the chair's report. Thank you. Um, do we have any comments or questions? It's Chrissy's report, and she's not here, but I. Can try and just, talk just to a it. general one. It's not so much a question, but uh, just a general comment about it. It, um, it does make reference to the emergency response to, to Gabriel mm -hmm. and uh, some of these events I have missed out on. As a general observation, um, I think we should probably have more structure around having feedback in regard to the response program because we're obviously really impacted by that in this area. And I see it really missing from the from the community board uh, agenda. Yeah, I agree. Um, yep. And it would be, you know, I think quite appropriate, you know, particularly if we had you know, an update from Stephen Town or or yeah. someone in relation to work or activities that impact on oh, it. On, uh, on the Mercury Bay area. Um, so that that was my sort of observation from reading it, that you know, it refers to it, uh, but it's a summary of what we have done in the past rather than, you know, as a community board, what the focus really is in this area to uh, to address some of the critical challenges around infrastructure and uh, business community and other aspects and I know there is a lot of good work and, and I think we're, we're just underselling really what the council is doing by, by not having a good summary in here. I'm happy to maybe drop a 
message to Aileen to ask if we could have <coughs> Stephen come and do an update to the board. Everybody yep. think that's useful? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, I have a comment through the chair regarding the high bollard in the um, chair's report and um, Chrissy's comment. I mean, this is the chair's report and this is yeah. the exception um, with respect. There appears to be a good solution on the table. I believe the board are happy with the outcome so far. I can't endorse that. I, I underlined it in oh, question okay. mark. Yeah, I would support that comment, Delhi. And I understand that that, that process is subject to a Lagoy so. Yeah. Well, through the chair, rather than it being described, um, you know, my description of it would be it is escalating now into even a wider issue mm. than what it was a month or so ago. So, um, you know, our original concerns in regard to, to this uh, are really starting to come to a head and it's just a shame that that is happening. Uh, okay, did anyone else have any questions or, or comments around the Chair's report? Um, I just have one which is for anyone listening, um, volunteer week. We are having a, a lunch here, um, one o'clock on the 23rd of June. So all the volunteers in our community, please come and join us for something to eat. And, and through the chair, and just going back on Linda Chamonley Smith uh, about the comments about the Filipino community, I have a lot to do with them. So I will ask them to come along. Okay. On that date, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Lovely. That's, that's yes. nice. So that's Thanks, Bess. Connection mm. here as well, Yes. yes. Um, and through the chair, I think Helena needs RSVPs for that. Oh, yes. Um, late lunch, so. Today. Oh, so that. Oh, <laughs> for anyone in the, in the community who has been yeah. invited or anyone who's okay. shoulder yes. tapped or anyone yeah. watching this, Yes. Recording or, or live, please, please RSVP. RSVP for that lunch. Just through the chair, Helena, have you got any more posters? I can give you some. Please, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I guess the next item is our public excluded items. So, yeah, so may I have someone? Thank you, John. Seconded, seconded by Bess. So we're going to move into public excluded now. So if you can turn off that recording, please. <laughs>